Hello, I'm Pauline Crow, Chief Executive of Prisoners Abroad. We're living through an extraordinary time and a pandemic that is creating unprecedented change in society worldwide. There has been nothing like this in living memory and it is certainly the first time that Prisoners Abroad has had to work so differently in its history to continue providing support to some of the most vulnerable people. I don't know about you, but for me, COVID-19 has meant spending long periods inside my house, restrictions on when and how I can see my relatives and friends and worrying that if people around me catch COVID, how will I protect myself, get access to medicine and medical help? This experience may well be providing many of us with a small inkling as to what the deprivation of liberty not only feels like, but the impact it has on our physical and mental well-being and health. For me, it resonates completely, and this insight renews my motivation to help some of the most vulnerable people in society. We have been helping people stay in touch across thousands of miles, prisoners living in fear of catching COVID in a prison that has no healthcare support, family members frightened by their knowledge of the prison conditions where their loved one is held and in great need of reassurance and the confidential listening ear that we can provide. We have continued to support people deported back to the UK after having lived abroad for decades, arriving at Heathrow and finding that literally everything was shut down. My amazing colleagues have worked tirelessly with consular staff around the world to get vital medical support to those in prison, as well as the basic needs which are no less vital, such as food and clean water. These are fundamental human rights and are always an absolute priority, global pandemic or not. Our partnership with the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office has been pivotal in providing the ongoing and crucial support our service users need around the world. You will now hear from the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office's Minister, Nigel Adams. Hello, I'm Nigel Adams and I'm the Minister responsible for Consular Services here at the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. It's hard to imagine how difficult life can be for British citizens detained abroad, far from home, far from family, confronted by an unfamiliar legal system, and this year by a highly infectious pandemic. If any of us or any of our friends or relatives were to face such a challenge, we'd want a charity like Prisoners Abroad to be by our side, because Prisoners Abroad have been supporting British prisoners around the world and their worried families back home for more than 40 years. In some countries, British prisoners depend on survival grants from prisoners abroad for essentials, such as food, clean water and medication. And our consular staff are working tirelessly to ensure that COVID restrictions don't stop this lifeline being delivered. In the UK, as a result of COVID, prisoners abroad have moved their family support groups and activities online so that detainees, uh, families can continue to receive help and offer one another solidarity. Of course, this all costs money, so I'd like to thank all those who helped fund this brilliant charity to do their great work. And I'd also like to thank all the dedicated staff at Prisoners Abroad for everything they do to bring dignity and hope to British people detained overseas and their families. Your work complements, enhances and informs the, the work of our own consular teams. And we're very proud of our enduring partnership that helps offer the support it needs to for those vulnerable British nationals overseas. Thank you. We've been trying to make sure that the most vulnerable individuals still receive grants for food, water, medicine and other essentials. It's the most vulnerable prisoners struggling to survive in dire conditions who are particularly at risk of catching the virus. So contact with them is essential. To paint a picture, in Southeast Asia, a prisoner phoned anxious to access our grant money as he has to pay for his drinking water as well as water to wash in. 
He pays for electricity and to be able to cook on a small kerosene cooker. He's managing to buy some vegetables and bananas, but food is currently three times the normal price, and it only keeps for two days, as it's already 36 degrees there. In North Africa, a prisoner was asking for our assistance, as food has been severely reduced, and he's surviving on two boiled eggs and bread a day. In Europe, some prisoners have been given temporary release in the country where they are imprisoned, which, although would initially sound like a good idea, actually left people homeless and with no money to buy food, nor any local support network. A prisoner in Southeast Asia suffered a stroke and needed to be transferred to hospital to get better medical treatment, which was a real challenge due to lockdown restrictions. We support so many prisoners a year, which means we are supporting so many families too. Our free phone helpline is as busy as ever. Family members are calling us with concerns and questions, hoping for reassurance and advice. Many are trying to find out how their loved ones are, and we are able to act quickly and get messages to consular staff around the world. We work across five continents, supporting over 1,600 prisoners a year, keeping them alive and healthy while in prison. And while the pandemic has changed some of the ways we do this, we are still the only charity providing support for British people in this situation. It is only possible for us to do this important work with your help. If, like me, you already give a donation, thank you so much, and could you give a little more this year? If you don't already give, now is a fantastic time to join us in the life-saving work that we do by starting to donate. Do please talk to us about how you can help. And thank you.